Okay, hello again. Now, um, as we, as I said before, we're going to do a video on Genesis chapter 49 now. Now, this is a, a bit of a lengthy study, so it's going to be more than one video. I'm not sure how many yet. Um, this is the chapter where the patriarch Jacob gathers his 12 sons together just before he dies and he gives each one of them a prophecy about their their uh, progeny or the children that will come from them and the nations that will come from them. Now obviously this has become a very popular Bible study because everybody wants to know who these nations are and there's been a lot of work done on um, trying to identify these nations in our time and particularly the lost ten tribes of Israel. Uh, where are they? Who are they? Now I started studying that and you know there's some things that may or may not be um, connections between the history of these people, when were they taken captive? 721 BC. So you got 700 years BC plus 2020 years. So that's 2,720 years ago they were taken captive. Um, now, personally, with my study, I've um, done some uh, research on that stuff and to tell you the truth, it's not really the trail that the Bible wants to put you on. The, the actual Bible itself is more concerned with the spiritual implications of what these people represent. That um, every person in this story in Genesis represents... Um, a certain teaching or, or there's a lesson to be learned from each one of them. And just like Ephraim and Manasseh are the house of Joseph and they basically came to represent Christianity and Judah came to represent Judaism and Jesus Christ as the, the kingship of Jesus Christ. All of the other children all represent something. Um, with me, with each of the children of Jacob, I, I, I'll, I'll give some things about, like, there's, there's like little traces of where these people may or may not be. But it's not really that important because it doesn't really mean anything. So I'll, I'll tell you about each one, what I know about them or what I found online about them. There's not a lot, um, and some of it is real speculation, where it's, they're just connecting dots that may be just unrelated dots. So the the real connection is in the in the um, the lesson that these people represent. So. The first one is Reuben, so I'm going to start the first video on Reuben. Now, if we go to Genesis chapter 49. Genesis. Reuben was the oldest son of Jacob. Jacob, who is Israel. And... He was the first son of the older sister, Leah. And Jacob, Genesis chapter 49, starting verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So the last days, that's like now. Um, or... Um, there's a few different ways to look at what are the last days. Um, 
When Jerusalem was destroyed in 586 BC, that was the last days. Um, it was a, a symbolic representation of the end of the world. When Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, that was the last days. It was another symbolic representation of the end of the world. And there will be a final last days. And all of these events are overlapping, are overlaid, so that uh, we, we have to look at each one of them and glean um, what the understanding is of all this. So when he says, I'm going to tell you what will befall you the last days, we, they talk about going deep. When, you, when you're reading the Bible, you go deep, right? And people, you know, they're like, we're going deep now. And then they go into something like this, just totally unrelated to what they're talking about. And when, when you refer to going deep into the Bible, the depth comes in this way. So we'll take Reuben as an example, the first, the oldest son, Reuben. Reuben was the, the, first he's the son of Jacob, and there's a story about him in the book of Genesis, the actual man, Reuben. And then on a, and then on a deeper level, there's the tribe of Reuben, who was one of the 12 tribes of Israel, who were the actual children of Reuben, the actual physical children of Reuben. That's the next deep level. You see how it's related to the level above it? And then those people were part of the lost ten tribes that were taken away by Assyria, um, represented in the last days. Now, there's a, a teaching about Reuben, uh, an understanding, the lesson learned from what happened to Reuben. Um, there's, that's the next depth of level of depth in this. So when you're talking about going deep into the Bible, you have to have a surface level, and then the next level, and then the next level, and all these levels are related. You can't just start, you know, pulling scriptures out and going, "I had a dream," or you know, it has to be related to something. It it it. it it is um, a multi-leveled book with multi-leveled understandings, but they are all related. And there, there are connections that uh, have to be made. So, this, so, you know, this is why I'm starting in the book of Genesis. This is a Bible study, and this is where it starts. So, we're going to take a look first at the man, Reuben. He was the oldest son of Jacob. And um, so he said, gather, Jacob said, Gather yourselves together and hear you, sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. So he's given them the name of Israel also and the name of Jacob. These are the sons of Jacob. Now, if we re remember in Genesis chapter 48, the very last video I did, um, Ephraim and Manasseh are, are named Israel, where these 12 sons are named Israel and Jacob. And this is another important thing when you're looking at uh, especially the Old Testament prophets, because they will talk about the sons of Jacob. And they will also talk about the sons of Israel. And there is a difference. Um, we're still learning what that difference actually is. Um, I think it relates back to Jacob getting the name Israel. Um, Jacob represents the, the man um, unrepentant or... Uh, um, the man before receiving the faith and belief and, and revelations of God. And Israel is the man after receiving the revelations of God.
It's like uh, before and after being saved. That's what um, Jacob and Israel represent. So, he starts off with Reuben. And he says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou went up to thy father's bed, then defiled it. He went up to my couch. So what does this mean? Well, let's take a look at Reuben's life first, okay? There's a few things about Reuben in here. Now, the first story of Reuben... I'm not going to go through all of these scriptures, but I'll just tell you the story. Oh, and it's, and it's uh, largely based on this um, chart that I made. Um, now this chart is for, uh, from the life of Jacob that we studied in episode 14, Jacob the Family Man. And this is a chart of Jacob's two wives, Leah and Rachel. And each of the wives gave Jacob one of their maids to make children with. So with Leah, he had four children, Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah. And then Rachel was envious of Leah because Rachel could not have a child. She was the younger sister, and Jacob was in love with her and not with Leah. Um, so, so Rachel envied Leah, and she demanded a child from Jacob. And he said, am I on God's place who has withheld children from you? And then Rachel gave her maid, Bilhah, to Jacob, to make children with him so that she could compete with her sister Leah who had four children already and that's when Dan and Naphtali were born and then Leah sees that she's not bearing children anymore and she's competing back with Rachel so she gave her maid to Jacob and from that maid Jacob got two more children two more sons Gad and Asher and then, after that, Reuben, who was the oldest son of Leah. Okay, now Reuben's name, you'll see at the top of the chart there, it says uh, his name means, see you a son. See, you have a son. And she said that she called him that because the Lord has looked upon my affliction and now my husband will love me. Because her affliction is that her husband doesn't love her. So she says, now I have a son, my husband will love me. So after um, the two maids made four more children, and they're totally in competition with each other, right? Then uh, Reuben, the oldest son, he found mandrakes in the field. Okay, now what are mandrakes? Mandrakes are... Um, a plant that grows in the Middle East and it's a hallucinogenic you may I guess you make a tea out of it it's a hallucinogenic and it's also an aphrodisiac and uh, this boy during the wheat harvest he found some mandrakes and they're like um, ain't there's a lot of ancient lore surrounding mandrakes they were like used by witches and they were made potions and uh, love potions and stuff like this so that's what mandrakes are they're love potion and it's a hallucinogenic aphrodisiac <laughs> so so this was a very prized thing to them and so uh so Leah owns the mandrakes because her oldest son Reuben found them. And Leah sold the mandrakes to Rachel for Jacob to sleep with her. 
because I guess Jacob was sleeping with Rachel because he liked her more. And so Rachel took the mandrakes and the deal was that she would make Jacob go sleep with Leah. Okay, so Reuben's mandrakes is what brought this about. And then Leah had two more children or three more children with Jacob after this deal. Um, these are th Leah's three more children, Ishkar, Zebulun, and Dinah, the, the daughter. And then it was after that that Rachel had two children, Joseph and Benjamin. So that's where Reuben sort of fits into this story. He's the kid that found the mandrakes. And you'll find that story in Genesis chapter 30, verse 24. And then Genesis chapter 35 Genesis chapter 35 verse 22 and this I will read because it kind of self-explanatory and it came okay this is um, this is this event took place that after Jacob came back from from um, Haran where he obtained his two wives and had all his children and he came back into the land and that's where he um, met up with Izu and he wrestled with the with God and received the name of Israel and um, they had dis they had killed all the people of Shechem um, because Dinah was raped and Simeon and Levi killed the people of the town and then Jacob um, had uh, w w received a message from God to go back to Bethel because Bethel was where God appeared to Jacob on his way out of Canaan. And Jacob said, if you bring me back to this place, then I will serve you all of my life. So he still hasn't gone back to Bethel. And Jacob was really worried and God told him, go back to Bethel. So he did, and um, Rachel, who was pregnant with Benjamin, uh, died in childbirth shortly after that. And then, after Rachel died and after her funeral, then Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, And it came to pass, when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. So that's all it says. Reuben, the oldest son, um, Israel heard about Reuben laying with Bilhah. And Bilhah was Rachel's maid, the mother of Dan and Naphtali. Okay? So that's... Uh, that's what Jacob was talking about when he said, you went up to your father's couch. Where is it? Chapter 49. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed and defiled it. He went up to my couch. Okay? So, um, he will not excel. He will fail. He'll be, he's a failure. Okay? Um, now, there's another story, too, about um, Reuben. When Joseph was going to... When Jacob sent Joseph to go find his brothers who were feeding the flock, and... They grabbed him and threw him in a hole and were going to kill him. Uh, Reuben was the one who uh, said, um, let not blood be on our hands um, to not kill him. Instead, we can sell him. 
when Reuben had plans to go take him out of the pit, but before Reuben came back, he was already gone and sold. So that's another story about Reuben, because he was the oldest, right? He was uh, very much a leader of these 12, and you can sort of see how the leadership went with uh, selling their brother to slave traders. Um, and now Reuben also, when Joseph was in Egypt as the leader, and he still hadn't revealed himself to them, and they were talking in Hebrew, and Joseph understood them, but he, he pretended he did not understand them. And Reuben, uh, <clears throat> when, when he found the, uh, the money in their sacks and took Simeon as proof that they had to go get their younger brother uh, before he would let Simeon go, Reuben said, I told you not to sin. Now his blood is required from us. So Reuben is, is telling his brothers, this is because of what we did to Joseph. So he sort of understands that, you know, karma um, and how it works. And he probably learned a lot about that from his father. So um, it's not like he didn't know anything about it, but he's... he's uh, He's sort of blaming his brothers instead of teaching them and not taking the blame himself. And then when they went back to see Jacob to try to get Jacob to let Benjamin go with them, Reuben was the one who said, um, if I don't bring him back, you can kill my two sons. So that shows another thing about Reuben that... Um, he was willing to kill his two sons as a, you know, as a guarantee that he would do something. Um, it was after Judah offered him his own, put his own life on the line and said, if I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame forever. He, he put his own life on the line. That's what made Jacob finally let them take Benjamin to Egypt. But um, he refused Reuben, who offered his two sons. So there's a lot about Reuben here. And then um, Reuben did have three sons, or four sons. Um, in Genesis chapter 46, 9, they are listed out. And the names of people are quite important sometimes. I don't know how important this is. Uh, Reuben's oldest son was named Henoch, which is actually Enoch, which is interesting. And that means initiated. Enoch was the uh, seventh born from Adam, and he walked with God, and he never died. He, he was taken by God into heaven without dying. Um, so Reuben named his firstborn Enoch. His secondborn, Phala, or Falu, which means pushed away or purged. And his thirdborn, Hezron, which means courtyard. And Carmi, which means gardener. So, that's Reuben's sons. Okay, so... Um, the other thing that I don't know if you um, are familiar with this, the sons of Korah who um, rose up in, in um, riot against Moses and they said who are you to tell us everything God says and you know they tried to take over and cause a revolution against Moses and God caused the earth to split open and swallowed them up. Um, Reuben's, one of the clans of the Reuben, Reuben's kids were a part of that uprising. Um, so it's just a side note to sort of remember. And then Reuben, um, 
when they got uh, the children of Moses and the tribes of Israel now, this is uh, hundreds of years later, um, so the Reubenites were one of the tribes, and it was the tribes of Reuben and Gad who had a lot of cattle, and when they got to the east side of the Jordan, and they were about to cross the Jordan to go into the land of Canaan to um, you know, start conquering the Canaanites, they had just had a battle with the Ammonites, they kicked them out of the land on the east side of Jordan. And so Reuben and Gad, they saw the land was great for cattle, and they said, how about you give us this land on this side of the Jordan? And it started a bit of a ruckus because people thought, um, how can you just take this land and leave the rest of Israel to go fight? And so they made a deal that uh, we will leave our cows here and our women and children here, and we'll go with you to fight. And then after the fighting is done, we will come back to our land. And so they said that was a good deal. So uh, Gad and Reuben were settled east of the Jordan, and half of the tribe of Manasseh also took land east of the Jordan. Uh, the half of the tribe of Manasseh sort of joined into the deal. So... You'll see that on the map. Now the interesting thing here is that Reuben committed incest. And that was um, what got him sort of uh, cursed by Jacob. Uh, he committed incest with the mothers, the mother of his, two of his brothers. So um, it's interesting where the tribe of Reuben ended up. Uh, right between the tribe right between two other nations who are named Moab and Ammon. Moab and Ammon were the sons of Lot. Lot was the nephew of Abraham, who Abraham said, you choose the mountain, I'll choose the valley. You choose the valley, I'll choose the mountain. Because they had to separate because their herds were so big, they couldn't stay together anymore. So Lot chose the valley, and that's where Sodom and Gomorrah were. And Lot was in Sodom when the angel had to come and rescue him from Sodom before God rained fire on it. Um, now Lot and his wife and his two daughters were the only ones saved from the city. And they ended up living in a cave, and Lot's two daughters got him drunk and each one they took turns each night to have sex with him when he was drunk and that's where their children came from the one was named Moab and the other one was named Ammon so those two nations of Moab and Ammon were from Lot's daughters and Reuben ended up sort of right smack in between them. So it's like that whole area was the incestuous ones. Now, I don't know if that was planned out that way, but that's the way it worked. And they were sort of, um, they were, Reuben was the tribe of Israel. Ammon and Moab were sort of a, um, used as a, um, what do you call it? A gene pool for Israel. They married and they, they took their women and married them. And we talked all about Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot and his daughters in uh, episode 8, the episode about Abraham. There's another interesting thing too. In Deuteronomy chapter 33... When I did the, um, the video about Ephraim and Manasseh and Joseph, uh, we looked at Jacob's blessing of Joseph. Uh, we didn't look at it in here. It's, it's pretty very much similar. Uh, maybe we'll look at that later. Uh, you can take a look at it. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 33, where Moses actually blesses each tribe of the 12 tribes. 
and it's it's sort of related to Jacob's blessings. Some of them are, um, so you can you can take a look at the, that yourself if you want to about Joseph, what Moses said about Joseph. It's very much related to the bounty of the earth that Joseph is getting all the bounty of the earth, which ties in perfectly with our previous episode about Ephraim and Manasseh. So in Deuteronomy 33, um, verse 6, he talks about Reuben. He says, Let Reuben live and not die, and let not his men be few. So Moses, Moses is kind of giving Reuben a blessing. Um, he's, he's showing compassion towards him. Um, something better than what uh, Jacob did for him. Okay. <clears throat> and that's all he said. He just said, let him live and not die. So let him not be completely wiped out. That was Moses' blessing to him. And there's another important verse here. First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1. So this is much later. They're, they're, they're reflecting back into history and they're saying, Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, who is the Christ, Jesus. But the birthright was Joseph's. So and then he goes on to name Reuben's uh, genealogy. So, this was uh, very much understood in Israel, in ancient Israel, that Jacob took the birthright away from Reuben and Simeon, the two oldest, and gave that birthright to Ephraim and Manasseh. And uh, Ephraim getting the larger blessing. Um, so Reuben lost his birthright. Because he, uh, I guess he messed with the birthright of Jacob. So that was the, uh, the fitting um, judgment on him. So what happened to the tribe of Reuben? Well, they're, they're not mentioned in the prophets. Uh, only one time. Uh, the prophet Ezekiel, uh, many people are familiar with uh, the, the very end of the book of Ezekiel, it's like he has a vision of the temple and it's very complicated and he, he goes through every um, chamber in the temple in this vision and the 12 tribes are represented by the 12 chambers in the temple and Reuben is named as one of the 12 tribes. So that's the only time in the Old Testament prophets, Reuben is named, uh, besides in the actual histories. And then there's one time he is named in the New Testament, and that is in the book of Revelation, when the book of Revelation talks about the 144,000, the 12,000 from each of the tribes. Reuben is named as one of the tribes. So... I guess uh, Moses saved him, th that he wasn't completely wiped out, but that's all there is to the story of Reuben. Um, he was carried off by Tiglath-Pilaser III, uh, along with the other tribes. When, when Assyria invaded Israel, the tribe of, Ruz Ru the tribe of Reuben was taken away. They're gone. You'll, you'll hear about this in 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 26. And they are starting in verse 25. 
and they transgressed against the God of their fathers and went a whoring after other gods of the people of the land whom God destroyed before them. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Paul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Tiglath Pilaser, king of Assyria, and he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh, and brought them to Hala and Habar and Hera, and to the river Gozan unto this day. And where are these places? Hala, Hera, Habor, Hera, Hala, and the river goes on. Um, there's only one reference in his history about the river goes on. It's a, uh, a river in northern Afghanistan that um, some of the um, British 18th century travelers who traveled through that area there was a lot of um, explorers exploring Eastern Europe and Asia and some of them wrote about the river in Afghanistan that used to be named Gozan and that's all we know about it. So it was probably in Afghanistan. Did Assyria own uh, a province up in there? They may have. Um, I suppose they did because they, they had taken over Elam and great parts into Asia. So they very well could have gone as far as that river in northern Afghanistan. But I mean, that's all we know. Are the people there still there? I mean, there's been Muslim invasions. There's been uh, Genghis Khan invasions. There's been Persian wars. There's been all kinds of stuff has gone on in that area. So are they still there? Your guess is as good as mine. But I think the the thing to be gleaned from this, from the story of Reuben, is um, that there are certain things that, um, how a fitting punishment fits a crime. And Reuben, he says, you're unstable as water, um, was what Jacob said about Reuben when he cursed him. And... I guess this is sort of the uh, the result of being unstable as water, and the result of committing incest is is just having uh, your your birthright. You lose your birthright, and you're sinning against your own birthright, basically. And and being unstable as water is is being wishy washy and not standing up for the right things so um, it probably came from his two mothers the two sisters fighting with each other all the time so you know it's just one of those things it's just a part of life they, they say the Bible is the book of life well this is life and um, this, this is not a sin that cannot be forgiven or anything like that. It, it's uh, it's uh, people who are saved by Christ are, are saved from this kind of stuff and from the implications that come from it. So, you know, it's just something to think about, something to ponder over about what happened to Reuben and what happened to his... Uh, his grandchildren and his the generations that came after him. That um, one thing the book of Genesis shows a lot is that the character of the grandfather is reflected in the great grandchildren and the great grandchildren. That somehow these things carry on and grow in the family. Um, Christians will talk about that when they talk about generational sins. Um, sometimes it can can just be generational circumstances or who you know 
there's lots of different things, but things carry down through generations. And this is the kind of thing we're talking about here. So that ends our discussion on Reuben. And the next video, I think I'll, I'll handle Simeon and Levi together because they were put together as one in Jacob's next blessing. Uh, or I don't know if you could call that a blessing either. But we'll talk about that in the next video. We'll see you then. Uh, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like the videos. Thank you.